past year, I saw a few people referring to Lindsay Lohan's Netflix movie, Falling for Christmas, as her comeback. But I guess these people don't know about her 2019 supernatural horror film, Among the Shadows. It's about a woman who has to solve her uncle's murder, while also hiding the fact that she's descended from a line of werewolves. A tale as old as time. This movie has a 2.1 out of 10 on IMDb, and a 24% on Rotten Tomatoes. Up front, I feel like this video is going to be very long, because this movie is all over the place. So not only will I be pointing out like weird plot holes or bad acting, I'm going to try to make some semblance of the plot make sense. That's gonna take time. All right, here we go, Among the Shadows. The introduction to this movie asks a lot from you. Why don't you go to the European police? Because I think it's one of you. I have a feeling I'm gonna wish I never answered that call. There's seemingly disparate shots of a lightning strike, a building exploding, a car exploding, all combined with a very confusing voiceover. And then there are just title cards that show us Brexit, Frexit, the European Union being disbanded in 2020, and the European Federation being formed in 2021. Some guy named Richard Sherman was elected president of the European Federation, but he is currently up for re-election. This movie was released in 2019, but it supposedly takes place in Brussels in the year 2022. So let's see if they got anything right. Spoiler alert, no they did not. So, who does Lindsay Lohan play in this movie? Well, she plays Patricia Sherman, the first lady of Europe. First lady Patricia Sherman addressed delegates in Paris on behalf of her husband's campaign. I'm immensely proud of her European Federation. We will use our fears to stay the United States of Europe. What is happening? Already, this movie is 100% not what I was expecting. Then it cuts from all of that to this lady talking about two sides of a war. This is where it gets complicated. This is where it gets complicated? We are one minute into this movie and you have changed the entire world order. But now it's going to get complicated. The next thing that we see that's not just weird atmospheric shots is this guy walking to his car while another guy is like creeping up behind him with a gun. The guy in black is walking solely through the puddles, which seems like the least stealthy way to sneak up on someone, but okay. At first, this seems like it might be a mugging, but then the guy mentions silver bullets. Well, silver bullet make big holes. So suit guy wolfs out and attacks, but the other guy is also a werewolf. And we have not specifically been told yet that they are werewolves. That is just me assuming at this point from, you know, the description of the movie. Suit guy gets shot, but off screen. We see werewolf vision as these other guys stalk two women jogging in the park. And the werewolves attack and eat the women. Suit guy is still alive enough to call his niece, uh, the woman who told us earlier that things were getting complicated, and he tells her that Randall shot him. No last name. It's Randall. Ren Randall Jackson. And she seems to know who Randall is, and then he dies mid-conversation. The police are now investigating the crime scene, and we learn that the niece is Christy Wolf, 
a private investigator with a very on-the-nose name. The cops think this whole thing is a mugging gone wrong, except that Uncle Suit Guy, whose name is Harry, it does come up later, uh, he was the re-election campaign manager for President Sherman. You wouldn't know it from how little screen time they have here, but these three cops are actual characters who you will need to remember for later. So now Patricia Sherman, i.e. Lindsay Lohan, wants to meet with Christy. Please, take a seat, Mrs. Sherman. What can I help you with? I want to hire you. For what? Someone wants to kill my husband. Now, I am going to reveal a twist. It's not a plot twist within the movie. It is a twist of expectations created by poor marketing. So clearly, Lindsay Lohan is the biggest name in this movie. So it makes sense that they would put her on the movie poster. And currently, her face is the biggest picture on the movie poster overlaid with the image of a wolf. And the movie promo summary talks about a young werewolf woman needing to solve her werewolf uncle's murder. But Christy is the werewolf main character described in that summary, not Lindsay Lohan. Because I think it's one of you. By me, you mean? A werewolf. Lindsay Lohan plays the First Lady of Europe, who is also a vampire! And what makes you so sure it's one of us, and not one of you? And by you, I mean vampire. This movie has werewolves and vampires, because of course it does. Why would a vamp marry a wolf? Because I love him. Both candidates wolves. If any of the humans knew. What is up with that weird, blurred out background? Lindsay Lohan looks like she was just green screened into this movie. There is one slightly interesting detail that I'm going to assume was intentional and not just a mistake, but when Patricia says, and stronger, referring to vampires, you can see that she has vampire fangs in that shot and only that shot. You're kinder and a lot more vicious than us. And stronger. Anyway, vampire Patricia wants werewolf Christy to figure out who is trying to kill Patricia's werewolf husband. So the president who's up for re-election is also a werewolf, and Patricia thinks that Harry's murder was a warning. Apparently vampires are also telepaths. You already have the desire. Everything We're not doing this. Get out of my head. Then Christy goes to a werewolf bar where they make a bunch of werewolf jokes. How about some service in here whilst I'm still a pup? One of your usual? The wolf. And they howl in Harry's honor. Another wolf has passed off. Raise him. And then Christy is just like, hey, have you seen Randall? Like, she doesn't even need to say his last name. You seen Randall? Don't tell me what's in. I feel like everyone is just being very nonchalant about this guy who they apparently know murdering this other guy who they also know and seemingly like. I need to find him. I'll make a call. There is no sense of urgency in tracking Randall down. I'll find you. I can smell you. I know you're there behind a corner and inside a sewer. This movie is such a weird script. I'll drink your sap while you beg me to stop. And I won't. Ew, are you threatening, like, a tree? Like, that's something that you would say if you went to Vermont to, like, tap a maple tree for the syrup, but wanted to really creep out the farmer. Christy gets drunk and goes staggering through the street while she has more flashbacks of her uncle. Like, again, where is your sense of urgency in solving his murder? Some dude comes up behind her and grabs her shoulder. So she wolfs out and jumps on his back and bites his neck, killing him. And if I did not know just from context that she was a werewolf, 
I would assume that she was a vampire. There's a news report about bodies being found in the park that then cuts to the werewolf guys who were attacking the joggers. I guess their job is to kill random people to keep the cops busy. And the one guy mentions that they'll be getting paid in two days on the 25th and then he throws down a December calendar. So are they getting paid on Christmas? Wait, at the beginning, I think they said that it was November, that it was November 13th, 2022, but now this calendar implies that it's December. Shots of the prison are also really weird. Like, why does it look like this? Why did somebody involved in this production decide to make the regular prison look like a haunted prison? Richard Sherman speaks on the news, and he is president of Europe, but he has an American accent. Harry Goldstone was a friend and political confidant for my entire career and he mentions his wife, so the camera cuts to a shot of Lindsay Lohan in front of a green screen. But then he mentions a guy named Frederick Forsyth, who is their lawyer and friend, and the camera cuts to a shot of two guys. Frederick Forsyth, our, uh, our lawyer and, uh, and friend. Which one of them is Frederick? And who is the other one? And then we're back to the three cops and the autopsy results have come in, but the lead detective does not seem to care at all about the silver bullets. The bullets were silver. Huh. Silver is silver, gold is gold. Dead is dead. Okay, but like, you're supposed to be investigating this murder. They want answers and they want them now. Ask every single question possible and come back with answers. I need answers. I feel like the whole silver bullet thing is kind of a clue. What do I need, Blaze? That's right. Go. I don't think this man is qualified to be a lead detective. The two guys from earlier are walking and conspiring, and one of them says that Harry had to go, but who even are these guys? Like, we know one of them is Frederick, but we don't even really know how significant Frederick is to, like, the administration. Listen, they aren't even human. You have to be careful. The one guy tells the other guy that they aren't even human, but we don't know what they he means. Like, we don't know if he means the president and his wife, or if he means Harry and other werewolves. Like, there is just not enough context here. President Sherman is talking to his campaign team, and apparently he's not doing well in the polls, and this guy is there, and he suggests that Sherman drop the free energy program. I'm gonna dump this free energy program. It isn't working with the voters. And it is a suggestion that Sherman does not like. Matthew, we're from different parties, but we've made this administration work. I appreciate dissent, but let's remain constructive. Sherman calls him Matthew, so he's Matthew. Matthew. So who is Matthew? Apparently, this free energy plan is making Sherman some enemies, and believe it or not, this, like, throwaway detail is an actual plot point that we will need to remember for later. Patricia and I are determined. Can't we leave Patricia out of this? I wouldn't underestimate Patricia. Yeah, speaking of Patricia, where, where's she at? What's she doing? Why isn't she there? You know, in person. I don't trust her. Do you? No. They don't trust Matthew, whoever he is. Oh, okay, Patricia's busy doing another TV green screen press conference while apparently Matthew watches. And she does say some words about Harry and his murder. We would like to send our love to Harry's family. Our condolences are with them. Christy is investigating, I guess? She's looking at pictures that I have no idea how she got. She tracks down this guy who is building bombs in his like weird blue twinkle light apartment. I could not tell you what is happening in this fight. It is so poorly lit. Like the rest of this movie, it is blue and dark 
and foggy. There are a lot of like speed up and then slow-mo shots. There are a lot of quick cuts in rapid succession, but regardless, Randall escapes. We see a shot of Matthew and his like, I don't know, girlfriend handing him a flash drive. Council would assume a greater it's important. role in determining You you found this. Where did you find it? The police come to the foggy twinkle light apartment in a scene that adds nothing except some more conflict between Christy and the lead detective. And see that private detective license of yours? I'm going to wipe my ass with it. Enjoy doing that. His name is McGregor, but there are so many characters that I'm just gonna continue to call him lead detective. By the way, when Christy got to the apartment, we saw a December calendar. But now that the police are there, like in the background, we can see that it's an April calendar. And the detective mentions that the 21st is marked for some reason. After Harry's funeral, Matthew questions Christy in the cemetery while the background music is way too loud. So, did you know what Harry was? Good politician. Wow, what an amazing actor. My God. Good Lord, are you one of them too? How many of them are in your family? My God, good Lord, how many of them are in your family? Oh yeah, by being threatened by an actual bitch? <laughs> A little shoulder tap, bitch. I only wanted to get Harry's killers to justice. Why? Why, it's good for business. It's better for the city. There's been enough killings. And besides, Harry was my friend. There's been enough killings. And besides, Harry was... My friend. Well, Mr. Vice President. Oh, he's the Vice President. Okay, they probably should have told us that. Random shots of the church with like a fisheye lens. The one cop, his name is Bastion, offers Christy a ride home and then boom, it cuts to a shot of them having sex. I did not get this vibe from them at all, but here we are. This movie feels like just a bunch of disconnected shots and plot points that somebody just handed to an editor and was like, here, make this a movie. And the editor tried their best, but it wasn't enough. You weren't checking on Randall Jackson for Alimony, were you? I'm assuming she told police that's why she was at Randall's apartment, but we didn't see that. Does anything connect to Edelman? They talk about this Edelman guy, and I'm like, who's that now? And I have watched this movie multiple times, and I can tell you with absolute certainty, this is the very first time we're hearing about Edelman. So in the very next scene, we see the aforementioned Edelman in a car with Mr. Kilborn. Debate within the bag, Mr. Kilborn. Who is Mr. Kilborn? I had to check, and that is the guy who Sherman is up against. That's the, the other candidate uh, that he's up against for the re-election campaign. And there's a throwaway line earlier in the movie that says that both candidates are wolves. Both candidates wolves. But that never comes back. I guess since joggers have been getting ripped apart in the park at night, they've decided to go jogging in even bigger groups. As opposed to just like not jogging at night in the murder park. So we don't get to see the presidential debate between Kilborn and Sherman, which like I'm not sad about, but we do see a news report saying that Kilborn won because he had all the answers. The news anchors are also wearing the exact same clothes and jewelry that they were wearing in the last news broadcast, which was definitely on a different day. And I'm just kind of guessing here, but I think that whatever Harry had in his briefcase at the beginning of the movie that was stolen had something to do with the debate. And so that is what got passed to Kilborn. 
Uh, the movie doesn't exactly tell us this, but that's me trying to figure things out. I also realized in this scene that I think the red-haired woman that they show walking next to Sherman is supposed to be Lindsay Lohan's character, but it's not Lindsay Lohan. It actually would have made sense to just not have Patricia in this scene because it is daytime and she is a vampire. After a scene of Christy looking at her conspiracy board all confused because she's a terrible detective, we cut to a scene of a meeting inside of a limo between Patricia and Sherman and the vice president and Edelman. Edelman wants Sherman to bow out of the election so that way Kilborn can win. You bow out gracefully next week due to illness. And I cut you in on a huge share of my profits on my deal with EFF New Pipeline. I had mentioned that the free energy plan that came up earlier was a plot point. Well, it turns out that the fossil fuel industry is really mad about this plan and they don't want Sherman to get reelected. So Edelman is working for them and he is trying to both bribe and threaten Sherman. Richard, be reasonable. You don't want European fossil fuels as an enemy. The audio on this movie is so bad. I had to watch it with closed captioning on just to have any idea what they were saying. Certain thought was through. Party pixies like poker. You win when you cover all anchors, and I always win. What? What's that about poker? And angles? Like, even when you can understand the words that they are saying, sometimes it still doesn't make any sense. The vice president is suddenly pulled out of the car and Christy hops in. And when I say suddenly, I mean like, it happens, but the vice president reacts like it's just a mild annoyance. Oh, what the hell? Christy threatens Edelman. I've got a question for you. Nothing to say. How many people did you tell today? None of us can hear you. Because he wants to have the bad business. You think this is a game? And she threatens the Shermans. If I find out anything to do with his death, I'll break his heart. And then Christy just leaves. What was the point of this? Edelman yells some orders. Take care of her tonight. Solve my problem. But who is he talking to? There aren't any henchmen in the car. In the next scene, we see one of the random shots from the intro, but now in context. Uh, apparently Christy's car was rigged with a bomb, and when she uses the remote to unlock it from across the street, the car explodes. She's also meeting with this guy. And fortunately I had closed captioning on because I had no idea that this was Harry, her dead uncle. So is this a flashback? There is no indication that this is a flashback. Like I initially thought this was just yet another random new character. There's a guy called Colin I'm trying to track down. I've heard a lot of good things about him. Do you know him? She's asking him about some guy named Colin. He conjures up potions for people. Potions? Powerful potions. Oh, right. Colin the Potion Guy! Sure, we've definitely heard about him before this exact moment in the movie. Colin is based in Rome, so in the next shot we cut to Rome. I guess Christy just hopped like a last minute flight from Brussels to Rome and then immediately tracked down Colin in the bathroom of the secret underground club that he presumably owns. They communicate telepathically with their faces real close together. I was, I was told, told to come, to come and, and see you. Am I in the right place? He says he'll be in touch when ready, but then in the very next scene, we see them in some other location, like in the daytime, walking around, 
but then also communicating telepathically. And this time he tells her that he'll have the potion for her in two days. You have it for me? For your uncle's sake. In two days, I'll have something for you. The potion is apparently meant to prevent anyone, but particularly Patricia, from being able to read Christie's mind. And she won't be able to get it in your head. No one will. No one will. For 18 days. We don't see her get the potion. Uh, Christie returns to Brussels. So I guess Colin delivers. And then suddenly, Christy is following Patricia around a cemetery, and we hear this audio of overlapping voices. And I don't know if it's supposed to be, like, Patricia reading the minds of people in the city around her, or if it's just supposed to be, like, random atmospheric sounds. Also, it is daytime, and she is a vampire. What are the rules here? Which, by the way, Patricia says that she's there to pay respects to a former lover, and they don't really tell us who that is. We just see them go into, like, a random crypt. He was my favorite. Husband. Lover. And I like the idea of Patricia being a really old vampire who visits the graves of her long-dead human lovers, but they're not really giving us enough information to know if that's even what's happening here. The one that got away. Not quite. So? We were making love, and... I get the picture. And? I don't get the picture! What does that conversation mean? Christy goes to some sort of, like, fighting gym where she boxes this guy who doesn't take a single swing at her. Then Christy is back at the bar where the bartender gives her the two first names of the two guys that Randall is working with. And he also gives her an address which is, like, actually useful information. She's ominous. Last Back to her conspiracy board, Christy now labels Armand and Mason, but I guess, like, she already had pictures of them, but she just didn't know their names? But then how does she know now which one is which? So Christy goes to the address that the bartender gave her, and she finds Armand, like, about to eat some guy, but then the bartender shows up and, like, kills Armand, which saves Christy, and then they have this exchange. It's been a bit. You should leave him. It's too late. No. Bring him out with you, fool. I love him also. What is the lore here? Like, he's been bitten by a werewolf, so the humane thing is to eat him alive? What is possibly going to happen to him that would be worse than getting eaten alive? So now Christy is back at the gym and she's fighting the third cop character. It's not the lead detective or Bastion, who's the one she's sleeping with. No, it's the third guy. I need to ask you a favor. From one old friend to another. Oh, apparently they're old friends. First indication of that we're getting. She thinks there is a leak in the police department for some reason. And she also thinks that it's Bastion, the, the one that she's sleeping with. Bastion is the only one that knows about the leak. That's my burden. Sherman has a video chat with Lindsay Lohan where not only is she not physically present, but it looks like her background is a green screen. Wish you were here. Me too, darling. Yeah, me three. That would make it more interesting. Colin shows up, so I guess he does deliver, and he gives Christy the potion in a cemetery. I'm so stoked for this. It's ancient blood of vampires. But it isn't even a potion. It's ancient vampire blood. But your mind will be shocked. It's a bit. So, like, you didn't even have to make anything. You just had that somewhere. There's another limo meeting where the vice president shows the president footage he got of him, like, eating somebody. Give me that. 
Yes, mine. You take that. Eat the leg. Your guess is as good as mine. They don't actually show us whatever the footage is, but the vice president is now trying to blackmail the president into killing the renewable energy program. It took me 30 years to develop. This can't happen over much. You have two days to kill it. The potion that Christie took is supposed to keep Patricia out of her head, but the very next scene shows Patricia entering her mind. Keep going. Keep going. The potion's good for seven days at a time. Very clever. I can only get you when you're sleeping. Christy. Patricia says that the potion is only good for seven days, but Colin told Christy that it was good for 18 days, although now it doesn't really even seem to be working at all. I don't really think Colin is much of a potions guy. Like, he should just stick to nightclubs. Frederick and this other guy are still trying to kill Christy and some other people. And then we see a news report that lets us know that that third cop, you know, Christy's, like, old friend, has been killed in a car explosion. I'm sure it will shock you, but the news anchors are still wearing the exact same clothing and jewelry that they were wearing in all of the previous scenes where we saw them. Then the lead detective, whose name is McGregor, he's the one who hates Christy, uh, he shows up at her apartment, but they discover they've been set up when some guy comes in and starts shooting at them. Shit! <laughs> He must be a terrible shot because they both slow motion jump over a desk in what is my favorite scene in the movie and neither of them get hit. It's also not a very solid desk. Like, it is pretty open underneath. They fight the shooter and they knock him out, but then Randall tosses in a bomb. So they both look at each other, shout, Bomb! And then run. Bomb! Why did they both need to be in the same place? Like, why not just kill them separately? And why not start with the bomb? They do escape, and it looks like they jump off of a balcony, but then we get a shot of the apartment exploding, and there are no balconies. What the devil are you? Who the hell do you think I am? I mean, I would guess vampire, but... Don't werewolves eat humans? Just like vampires don't go around biting people's necks and they can go out during the day. We can adapt. There are 25 minutes left in this movie, and now we're getting some lore? Also, vampires can just adapt? to walk in the sunlight? That would be like me just adapting to breathe underwater. Patricia Sherman took the stage today at the International States Business Summit. More news reports. She made her first public statements since the death of Harry Goldstone. Hasn't Patricia made a public statement about Harry's death before now? Like at the Energy Summit earlier? I included a clip. We would like to send our love to Harry's family. Her statement is the same dialogue as the scene we saw during the intro of the movie, but it's not exactly the same shot. I'm immensely proud of the European Federation. We will use, we will our, use fears our fears to stay in the United States and Europe and become and a become stronger, stronger, more peaceful, peaceful order, order as an example, as an example to the rest, to the rest of, the of the world. Something my husband Something wanted, wanted for, so for so long. To unite, to unite us all. Right. Christy and the detective remember the calendar from Randall's apartment. What's the date today? 25th. The calendar? What calendar? The calendar in Randall's apartment, the 25th was circled, the number eight, we know he's linked to Edelman. And today's the date that he had circled on the calendar. Do you think something's planned for today? Except that the calendar was a December calendar, but then when the police came, it was an April calendar. But then the guys told us that they were gonna get paid in two days on the 25th, and that was on their December calendar. Except the beginning of the movie told us that it was November. It was November 13th. And then the beginning of the movie also told us that the speech that we just saw Patricia give was on December 2nd. 2022. Either way, the bad guys and the good guys are now all on their way to a party that the president is hosting. Just lots of shots of driving, 
and like people walking around and voiceover of like various military sounding instructions. Tactical details stay out of sight at all times. I cannot emphasize how many shots there are of people just walking around while overly dramatic music plays. <laughs> Echo team, maintain control of our escape vector. Christy and the detective call Bastion, even though she's suspicious of him, and like they ask him to get there to try to stop whatever's gonna happen. And then Bastion's taking the elevator and he's just like, do 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 do. Ah, oh, these gloves are nice. And there's shots of Patricia in front of a green screen. That's like an actual green screen now. Um, but that's probably the real green screen that Lindsay Lohan used to film almost all of her scenes for this movie. It's like the longer we wait, if we just don't go right after we hear it, then it's gonna keep happening. What? That feels like they accidentally included a behind the scenes shot of Lindsay Lohan, but just like put it in the actual movie. I thought Randall was gonna do something like werewolfy to go after the president, but no, his plan is just to like shoot him sniper style. And we see all of the massive amounts of security flanking the building, but somehow Randall is able to get like the perfect shot while the president is like inside this building with limited windows and flanked by people. And then Bastion kills Randall, like he's, he's tying up loose ends because he's a bad guy. But somehow when the detective and Christy arrive, like they don't realize it. Shot twice. By who? Snowbacks. Let's go. Even though he's at the scene of the crime, and she was suspicious of him earlier. Edelman leaps out of a crate and attacks the detective, but Christy is able to save the detective and then Edelman runs away. Now it's daytime. I would like to know what actual tragedy this stock footage is from. Another news broadcast with an address from First Lady Patricia Sherman. First of all, that pink lipstick and like the bouffant are not doing her any favors. In the spirit of that pride, I am announcing that I will be taking his place on the ballot for the office of president. Second of all, she announces that she will be taking her husband's place on the ballot to run for president, because I guess you can just do that. We get like vlog style footage of Frederick emptying his safety deposit box and like scheduling a flight to Jamaica. Christy is back to the conspiracy board. She has figured out Literally nothing so far. Okay, we find out that Patricia wins the election, but I can't show you the relevant movie clip because it is a news narration over a shot of full frontal nudity from that young woman that the vice president is like sleeping with or whatever. We get a very explicit and lengthy sex scene between the vice president and like this very attractive younger woman. And considering, you know, his acting chops that we've seen thus far, I kind of figured that maybe the director included this scene because like he owed this guy some money or something. So I looked it up and the actor who plays Michael is the producer of the movie. Gross. Immediately afterwards, he finds her with like a gunshot wound to the head. What the fuck? I think he gets shot too, but it's hard to tell because the scene cuts really quickly. Then we get a scene where like Lindsay Lohan's body double is clearly standing in for some of the shots while Lindsay Lohan does the voiceover. And then the camera also cuts to like close-ups of her face, which are clearly green screened in. I'm sure you are. And then Frederick gets shot in the back of the head because I guess he thought he could like wait a day before skipping town. So Christy now confronts Patricia. You had me completely fooled. I don't know what you're talking about. And she accuses Patricia of being the mastermind behind everything. Stolen debate material. 
death threats backed up by Harry's murder. You had us all looking the wrong direction. Because when a husband gets murdered, he's the first person the police look to. She also says that Edelman was killed by a silver bullet, but I feel like the last we saw of Edelman, he was just like running away in the alley. <sighs> Patricia is impressed. Well done. Maybe there is room for you in the new administration. One of the henchmen is pointing a gun at the back of Christie's head, but the detective appears and shoots him. Patricia attacks the detective and bites him, and Christie tries to fight Patricia off, but Patricia is able to knock her out, which does make sense because they established earlier that vampires are stronger. The whole fight scene was clearly like a body double, but I can't figure out if Lindsay Lohan was on set that day at all. Like the only scene where we see like her face in the same shot as somebody else is when she's strangling the detective, but it's also very dark and it's a very quick scene and like her hair's in the way. So I feel like they could have just put the same makeup on the body double and just been like, eh, whatever. Christy is getting like dragged somewhere and she has like a weird vision thing with flashes from the past. But she also hears Patricia's voice in her head. And removed all traces of my endeavors. McGregor, he won't let you. He's one of us now. And I guess McGregor, like the lead detective, is a vampire now too. We also get these amazing images of Lindsay Lohan, like surrounded by hellfire. Patricia telepathically lays out the plan. Christy is going to turn herself in and take the fall for killing Randall and Mason. Those are the, the two henchmen. And her reasoning will be that she was getting revenge for them killing Harry. Tomorrow, you will turn yourself in. Bastion will be with you. You will confess to killing Randall and Mason, retaliation for Harry's murder. But I don't know how her taking the fall for those two deaths will take the heat off of anybody. Like, the president and his entire administration are dead now. You'll be given a lenient sentence, two to four years. You only serve 12 months. Then you'll be compensated like you never thought would be possible. I can't even try to make sense of what Patricia's plan actually was. Like, obviously the end goal was for her to be president. But why kill Harry? Why have Kilborn get the documents from Harry's briefcase, I mean, presumably, so he would do well in the debate and pull ahead in the polls. What was up with that free energy program that like everyone was so mad about? You just put down your fears and lift yourself with me. What does that even mean? The weird flashes and narration combined with like Christie's inner thoughts Keep going. I didn't find Who do you think killed him? No. I'll do what I have to. She pins up photos of Patricia on her conspiracy board, and then she takes down the photos of Patricia from her conspiracy board, and then she sadly disassembles her entire conspiracy board. There's a brief moment where I guess she meets with Colin to like touch noses and telepathically tell him that the potion didn't work, <laughs> like at all. Did you know? She could still read my mind. She heard every thought. There is no way to prevent her. She's trying to do good. And Colin's like, well, Lindsay Lohan is just too good. Christy goes along with Patricia's plan. She turns herself in, but she vows to spend the entire year in prison planning her revenge on Patricia. Like, we're in clear wrap-up mode now, and there is a lot of voiceover that feels like it could serve as the last line of the movie. I'll be out in a year or so. Not that long. Plenty of time to think it over and plan. But it's not! She's won. For now, today, I'll have my day. It just won't be for a year or so. 
It keeps going. I'll be the animal Harry told me I was. I have to do this. And going. But it's not over. And when it's done, and I'm done, Harry will have his day. I won't forget him. She won't keep me in a cage for very long. But then we get random shots of the city with no voiceover, and then it cuts to the moon for some reason, and then the movie is over. I know what you're thinking. That made no sense. And despite all the time I spent detailing the different scenes and the different plot points, clearly I must have left something out that would make all of these disparate elements fit together in some way that makes sense. But no, there was, this was just the movie. This was it. I watched it. I watched it more than twice. I can't get that time back. So like, clearly this is a bad movie, but like, it's the type of bad movie that's in a different vein than Falling for Christmas was a bad movie. Like, this is the type of bad movie where the producer gives himself a lengthy sex scene with a much younger actress, like, right at the climax of the movie. No pun intended. Okay, pun like a little bit intended. I'll find you. I can smell you. I know you're there behind a corner and inside a sewer. 